Robertson County wanted to go ahead and just delay that celebration. Plus, it's been so eerie and dreary with the snow and now rain. So um, just look for details for that rescheduling so we can celebrate our newest members in a new year. Uh, the UMYF outing is today uh, due to the snow last week. Uh, last Sunday, they went ahead and postponed it, so they're going to go to the city forum in Clarksville. Um, so, if you have any questions, uh, well, we can get Holly's number and everything because Holly isn't here. But got you got a group, okay, perfect. So they have a group for all the DMYS stuff. Um, Sunday school also, uh, we're just going to go ahead and postpone it for the next uh, two weeks until January 23rd. But that is a great opportunity, though, give you time and prep, uh, because for our adult Sunday school class, we'll resume our study of the parables with Rev. Rita. And as always, we have all of our kids' classes, so don't let that hold you back um, from coming. The whole family can come during Sunday school to participate. And uh, the class for the adults meets in the fellowship hall. Um, let's see, we have Lady Club will meet tomorrow evening at First uh, Springfield First UNC at 6.30 and all are welcome to attend. We have our Acts of Love sheets. Um, there's a basket over to the side that has those and they're also, I do believe, are going to be in the um, uh, newsletter and stuff. The extra ones are over here, fill it out and place it in the offering plate. Uh, just to highlight a few, if you're not familiar with our Acts of Love, it is where, um, you know, you can look at the different ministries of our church to be able to participate in them. Some big ones that we'd love to, to highlight, of course, we need a tech team uh, just to continue to grow that ministry since it is newer for us um, and that way and to accommodate for both services. So uh, just looking for maybe, you know, five, six people that are really interested in that. Um, we're also, of course, always joining the car. There's always power in numbers and lifting your voice. So um, those are two of the ministries to highlight, but there are several, uh, and they're broken down in different categories. So please uh, just prayerfully select some of those so they can get involved in our ministries. Um, looks like meetings are going to be uh, postponed. The Council on Ministry and Finance will not meet next Sunday as originally scheduled, so just look for those rescheduled dates. Communion offering for January, taking up throughout the month of January is for my father's house, a Christian based overnight shelter for the homeless and displaced individuals and families here in Robertson County. And also to highlight too, Kara Barnes, uh, Kara Barnes writing is her baby shower. The church is invited to celebrate it on September the 5th. Uh, September the 5th, Saturday, February the 5th. Oh, sorry. Saturday. So what day is it today? I don't know if everybody else has been like that with the whole street team. So Saturday, February 5th at 2 p.m. here at Free Murray United Methodist Church and the registry can be found at uh, babylist.com. And we still have the comps for sale. And we're just having our little acolytes light our candle to open worship. No, it's perfect. And it's good to have a little acolyte. Yeah. It's a good thing. Got to bring in the Holy Spirit. There's no better way than the people. <laughs> Any other announcements before prayer concerns? And then other than those listed in our bulletin, any prayer concerns to bring forward? No, there's many individuals on our list, so we want to continue to lift each of them up. Well, let's open worship with a beautiful hymn of praise, Angels from the Realms of Glory. We're going to be singing on page 220, and it's verses 1 and 3. Please stand as you are able.
God, we come today to worship you, to praise you. We remember the story of the wise men, the magi, who came from afar, bringing their treasures. And we are told that they bowed down and worshiped you. We would do the same today. We would bow down. We would adore you. We would praise you because we know what a great and loving God that you are. And we thank you for the gift of the Christ child, who is the Lord and Savior of our lives. We would bow down and worship him today and proclaim that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. <laughs> oh, loving God, we thank you for the sign that you gave those wise men, that beautiful star that was shining so brightly in the sky. Help us to look up and to be aware of the signs that you give us each day of your presence and your work in our world. They are wonderful and beautiful signs, and so often we ignore them. We are such busy people. We go about our, our uh, days uh, just rushing around, full of activities, of all the things that we have to do. Let us stop and pause and see the signs of your grace and your mercy and your love. Sometimes those signs come to us through the people that you send into our lives and through a, a church community that nurtures us and affirms us. So we thank you for sermons and for prayers and for scripture and for friends in Christ that give us good signs that lead us in the right direction. I'm thanking you for the gifts that the, the wise men brought to you. And today we think about the gifts that you have given each of us and how we might offer those to the Christ child and ministry to others in the world, people that are hurting, people that are suffering. I thank you so much for this congregation, the way that they reach out, and they use their gifts so beautifully, and they help those that are in need in so many wonderful ways. Continue to bless us, continue to help us to be sensitive to people around us who just need a little kindness and a little compassion and a little love and grace in their lives. And I thank you for the direction that you sent the wise man in. You warned them to go in a different direction, a good direction, a direction that would lead them home. And today as we think about ways that you might lead us, help us to be sensitive to 
the Holy Spirit speaking to us, leading us in the right paths. I pray for those today who do not know the direction they need to go in. Maybe they're headed in the wrong direction. Oh, gracious God, turn them around. Help them to, to know you as a God of love, a God who wants to guide and direct their lives. I pray for those today that are suffering, for those that are hurting, for those that have lost loved ones, for those that are sick today, those that are dealing with COVID. I pray for those today that might be traveling. We know the, the roads may not be good today around our area and other parts of our nation. We pray today for the people of the world that they might have that epiphany that the wise men had to, that aha moment to say, Lord, you are present, you are real, you are alive in our lives and in our hearts and in our world today. In all things of gracious God, we will give you thanks today for you are indeed a great and loving God. And as we leave this place today, perhaps you will lead us in a different direction. But it will always be a direction that leads us home to our Father and leads us out to a hurting world. We ask all of these things today in the name of Christ our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. several times over the past 15 years, and uh, one of our favorites is the James Taylor song. It only fits once each year on Epiphany, and so we're, we're happy to have uh, drums for the this year. So, uh, hope you enjoy this much.
Help us to use our gifts. To show the world that Jesus is Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. Y'all have a good week. story today of the wise men from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yes, thanks be to God indeed. And thank you, Reverend Reed. Friends, did you know the little known fact before we get started with the message that the wise men were firemen? Yes, excuse me. You didn't know that? This is a good story. <laughs> it depends on the version that you look at, but in the Bible it says they came from afar. <laughs> there it is! <laughs> I never know what I tell that joke. I think y'all heard it. That's good. I love that. Good, good, good. All right. Well, good morning, church. Morning. Morning. Is the weather any uh, any less drippy out there? No. <laughs> Thank you all for braving it, and, and I think we've got Facebook working. I will tell you, um, Miss Jenny was planning on being here, and I meant to say this during prayer concerns. Um, our daughter Kate was heading back to school at UT Chattanooga yesterday, and the snow and ice was just not gone quick enough, and so we just said, "Why don't you wait?" And so she was going this morning. Well, I'm on my way here, and there's ponding all on the roads because the rain is nowhere to go. It's just all on top of the roads, and we didn't feel comfortable with her headed back by herself over Mont Eagle and down Mont Eagle. So uh, I asked Jenny if she would drive her, and then I'm going to go get her. As soon as the service is over, I'm headed to go get Jenny. So travel and mercy uh, prayers would be appreciated for Jenny and for Kate and for myself for the day. Also, later this week, good Lord will it, uh, Jenny and I are going to spend a couple of days in sunny Florida. Don't feel too bad for us. Um, <laughs> but I wanted you to know, it, it gives us also an opportunity for Reverend Rita to preach because I really enjoy it when she gets to preach. So please come and support her. Uh, she'll be delivering the message next week. Um, but anyway, so prayers for, for all of those things. Uh, it is good to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 It is a great day. Rain, rain or shine to be in the house of the Lord. 
Okay, so our, uh, I don't have the screen today because, again, Miss Jenny's not here and, and, uh, and Roy's not here. So there's a plug for people that can help with uh, technology so we can have a couple other folks that join us for that. Uh, but the title of the sermon is Recognizing, Rearranging, and Recalculating. Three R's. Recognizing, Rearranging, and Recalculating. It made more sense in a minute. This is the story of uh, the wise man from Matthew chapter 2 that we're going to read as this read. I'm going to begin with the story. Of <clears throat> it was a Friday in January 2007. A young man exits the subway in Washington, D.C.'s Lawn Plaza with a violin case. He's dressed casually in jeans and a t shirt and wearing a Washington Nationals baseball cap. He stops near the doors leading out to the street, removes the violin and takes the case and lays it open at his feet, throws a few dollars in there for seed money. Y'all familiar with someone that might be performing on the streets and doing things like this? It's 7.51 in the morning. It's rush hour. And he begins to play. For 43 minutes, he flawlessly played six pieces of classical music from the likes of Bach and Schubert and Mendelssohn. During his performance, exactly 1,097 people passed by him. Only seven of these people stopped to listen for at least a minute. Three listened for over a minute, the longest being nine minutes. Twenty-six people dropped some money in his case, most of them on the run. I've done that. You've probably done that. The grand total was $12.17. So yes, people gave him pennies. Finally, as he was performing his last piece, a woman stopped directly in front of him with a big smile on her face and listened for the final two minutes. She gave the musician $20. So his take for the morning, $32.17. He thought it wasn't bad for less than an hour's work. It's about $40 an hour. But there's more to this story. You see, three days before, that same musician had played at Boston Symphony Hall where the cheap seats were $100. The musician's name is Joshua Bell. At the time, he was 39 years old, and he is still thought by many to be the best violinist on earth currently. The violin he played that day was an original 1713 Stradivarius currently valued at $14 million. His opening piece, Chacon, by Bach, is considered the most difficult solo violin piece to master and also one of the greatest pieces of classical music that has ever been written. The events of that day were part of a social experiment conducted by the Washington Post. It was made famous in an article titled Pearls Before Breakfast later earning its author, Gene Weingarten, a Pulitzer Prize for journalists. Anybody familiar with this story? You are, Julie? It's a great story. You know, one of the questions that's been debated since that article is, can people really recognize beauty if it occurs in places that you don't expect to find it? That's a great question to ponder. And it begs another question. Are people too busy? too preoccupied with life to be able to slow down long enough to see and appreciate something of beauty. British author John Lane puts the events of that social experiment this way. If we can't take the time out of our lives to stay a moment and to listen to one of the best musicians on earth, play some of the best music ever written, if the surge of modern life so overpowers us that we are deaf and blind to something like that? Then what else are we missing? It's a great question. This past Thursday, we entered into the season of Epiphany. Now, I remember Epiphany every year because it's my mama's birthday. <laughs> so I've celebrated that day for, for a long time. I think, was that the day the snow came too? They all had an aha moment there, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, it occurs the 6th of January every year. The word epiphany from the Greek word epiphania 
means appearance or manifestation. Epiphany is the day Christians remember the coming of the Magi, those visitors who were not Jewish, but came from another land searching for Jesus and bringing their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The arrival of these visitors was a sign that the incarnation of God in the baby Jesus had been known to others outside of Israel. It was recognized by some sign appearing in the heavens. And now other people understood, people that weren't Jewish, what God had come to do. That he'd come to save not just Jewish people, but all people. Praise God. You know, a little over a year ago, do we have any astronomers in here, people that like to watch the stars, got a telescope, just look up on a beautiful, clear night, look at the stars, nobody? Okay, a few of them. We're beginning to worry you. <laughs> if you looked up in the night sky on December the 21st, 2020, about a little over a year ago, you probably saw two really brightly appearing planets that almost touched. Do you remember that happening? A lot of people may remember it because we talked about it being the Christmas star, maybe. You know? And so what that's called, that's called the Great Conjunction. And it's when Jupiter and Saturn come so close in the night sky that they almost appear as a single star. The last time that was actually visible from planet Earth was in 1226 when the Cathedral of Notre Dame was beginning to be built. The next time those two planets will appear that close again will be August of 2417. So it's a pretty special thing. You know, I really love to look at the night sky. Especially when I can be in an area where there's no light pollution. You know, around town it's hard to see all the stars. You just see the brightest ones. So a few years ago we were camping at Curry Hammock State Park in the Florida Keys. And the sky that night, it just looked like diamond dust. I didn't know there were that many stars. Do you remember how beautiful the sky was? Because there was no light pollution. And it just astounded me. And it made me think of God. In Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. And they were doing that that night. Amid the beauty of all those thousands of stars and galaxies swirling above me, I felt small. But at the same time, amazed by the bigness of our universe that pointed to the even bigger creator. You know, there's a song by Hillsong United called So Will I. You all know that song? Well, the first chorus goes like this. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made, every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. Isn't that beautiful? That's poetry. Today we speak of an epiphany which is a sudden appearing, a revealing, or a moment where something is made known. It's often described in modern language as an aha moment. You ever had one of those? You ever had an aha moment? You know, when I look at the stars shining, I often have those worshipful moments where God reveals to me His glory through the witness of creation. Perhaps you've had times like that in your own life. In Matthew's Gospel, we see that a group of magi, likely from Persia, modern-day Iran, experienced something that revealed the glory of God in a very specific way. Perhaps they saw a comet. Perhaps they saw this conjunction. This happened in 7 B.C. Perhaps it was an angelic appearance, like the shepherds saw outside the fields. That one. We don't really know, but whatever it was, it, it revealed to them, it revealed itself in the heavens. And made known to them something very specific. The birth of the king of the Jews. Because they already knew that. They knew the what, they didn't know the where. Did you notice this in the scripture? They get to Jerusalem and they say, where is the one who was born king of the Jews? They didn't say, we're following this light and it led us right here, what's up? 
They already knew. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Don't miss that. The first lesson we can learn from the epiphany today is that we must make ourselves available to see. To recognize the beauty of what God is revealing to us through Jesus Christ. A conjunction of planets, the, the Milky Way, even a beautiful violin solo played in a crowded subway terminal can't be recognized for what it is unless we stop and look. A family in need, the helpless, the hurting, the lost, we must be looking to see them. We must be asking God to show them to us. And perhaps in them, we can find an epiphany, an aha moment. Perhaps in their eyes, if we take the time to look, we might see the eyes of Christ revealing something to us. Friends, I believe every day God is showing us His glory and revealing to us His grace. Amen? Mercies are new every day. It's grace. We get a fresh supply every day. We're given opportunities every day to see beyond ourselves and to notice beauty in places that we wouldn't expect it. The question is, are you able to recognize it? Can we stop and see? Can we look up from our phones and from our schedules and the bustle of life to appreciate what God is trying to reveal to us? Y'all know the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off? One of those quotes in that movie, I love it. Ferris Bueller says, Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop, around, stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Isn't that true? God is a God of revelation. He reveals himself in so many ways. And according to our scriptures, even to those who don't know him, <laughs> We want an epiphany in our lives. We may have to stop being busy long enough to look up and see what God is trying to show us. For the wise men who lived for eight, about 800 miles away in a different culture, God revealed the birth of Jesus, and they didn't miss it. It was the first time a Gentile was allowed to see what the Jews should have been seeing all along and what they'd been looking for, the birth of the promised Savior and King. You know, in John chapter 1, verses 10 through 13, we hear this about Jesus. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, you might say to all those who recognized, who looked up, to those who who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. Epiphany moment. Anyone can become a child of God. Amen? And it isn't about who you're descended from, or what others will for your life, or who your parents are. The aha moment is realizing that believing in Jesus gives us our new birth through God's Spirit, and that's purely a gift from God that is available to everyone. So what did the Magi do with their epiphany once they recognized it? They rearranged their schedules and reordered their lives so that they wouldn't miss it. Do y'all have those things in life that you, you just always do that you can't miss? Maybe if you're a season ticket holder to a football team that you like, you know, you, you, you move your schedule around to make sure you make those games, right? There's just something, surely, that everybody has that's important enough to them that they would make sure and make time for this. And I want you to think about what that is for you. For our family, we love to travel. And because of mine and Jenny's work schedules, we make plans for our trips way in advance. When we had our camper, we were going to go to Yellowstone one year, and we realized uh, that you have to make reservations over a year ahead of time to have a camping spot. So we did, and you better believe that was one of those things that 
We were going to do all we could to make sure that we made it on that trip. We're going to rearrange our schedule. Let nothing come between us and that trip. Wasn't that a great trip? Mm -hmm. A great trip. You know, we'll reorder and rearrange our lives for things that are important to us. What are those things for you? For the wise men, apparently seeing Jesus was one of those things. Whatever God did to reveal to them in the heavens what he was doing in Bethlehem, it was so important that they said, we're not going to miss this. By the way, it's about 800 miles we think that they traveled. That's like from here to Disney World. Now, friends, I can't get from here to Destin with small children without taking 12 hours, right? <laughs> Like, this is a seven-and-a-half-hour drive. Y'all been there, right? Can you imagine on a camel or maybe walking when the camel gets tired through the desert, 800 miles, leaving your family, leaving your, your employment, whatever you're doing? Uh, it took about three months, I think. Because if you notice, it says after Jesus was born, and the, and the Magi went to a house, not to a stable. Right? So it took them a while. Now, somebody said if it was wise women instead of wise men, they would have got there on time, and they would have brought more practical gifts. Can I get an amen, ladies? Thank you, casserole. That's right. I love it. It's important to note, though, that the wise men didn't create what they saw in the sky that got their attention. They didn't have anything to do with, with bringing about the birth of Jesus. That's all by God's grace. But what they did do once they recognized it is they reoriented their life towards it. That's the point. You know, they used their intellect to study the heavens. They, they used their time and their energy. They used their hands and their feet. They used their money to bring these gifts to give to Jesus. And they sacrificed, left their homes, left their jobs, left their families for a while. And they used all of these things to actively move toward what God was doing. Because it was that important to them. Are we as committed to learning what God is up to in the person of Jesus Christ that we will rearrange our lives and align ourselves with God's plan? Not our plan. Do we believe that what God has done and is still doing in our lives in this world through Jesus is so important that we don't want to miss it? Have you had an epiphany in such a way that you understand to some degree who Jesus is and what God has accomplished through him? Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 20 talks about this is who Jesus is. This is what God is doing through him. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. That's who Jesus Christ is. That's what God is doing through him. Pippin? I believe the more we understand who Jesus is and what God is accomplishing for the whole world through him, I think the more we, we, we rearrange our lives and reorient ourselves to what God is doing there, we've got to have the proper understanding of who Jesus is. And put everything else on hold. And head towards that. Align our lives with that. And I think then we'll be more committed to using the resources God has given us. Our time, our talents, our 
prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, our witness. You've heard that, right? All for Christ. Does this sound exhausting? That's a lot of work. Yeah. Lord, I don't think I can add all these things to my life. Guess what? You're right. Not without something else having to go away. Maybe it's time to think about what we need to start doing. But in order to start doing those things, maybe we need to figure out what we got to stop doing. To live a life that's oriented towards the blessings and goodness of God. Lastly, I want you to notice the Magi encountered the Christ child. After they did, they, they bowed down to worship him. They gave their gifts to the king. And the last verse of our scripture today says, And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. That's what the song was about. Home by another way. Have you ever had a fight with your GPS? <laughs> we have words sometimes. Once I was pulling my camper to a campsite in a very busy city. And I was following that GPS faithfully until suddenly it instructed me to make a U-turn. How is that legal? <laughs> Y'all ever had that happen? Yep. The only way you can get there is to make a U-turn. Come on. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is? to turn a 36-foot camper attached to a 20-foot truck around in the middle of a divided highway in a busy major metropolitan city. Apparently, the GPS did not know this. <laughs> yeah. So, I, there was a few choice words I had for it, and I had repented. <laughs> Mom heard it. <laughs> And after this, the GPS began to tell me it was recalculating. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> but it was trying to show me another way to get where I needed to go. Right? Friends, having been made aware of the grace of God through Jesus Christ, having looked up, having recognized and appreciated the beauty of what God is revealing to the world, and especially to you through Jesus Christ, Having understood what Jesus means for your life. Been able to rearrange and reorient your life to follow Christ. Guess what? God is going to need you to turn your life around right in the middle of a busy world. You're going to have to go another way from that moment on. Are you willing to let God recalculate your route? In 1964, the Willis Brothers had a wonderful trucker song. Y'all ever listen to country music? Old country western stuff. Trucker songs. Yeah? You know this song, Willis? I'm sure I do. <laughs> this song makes me giggle. Sorry. Oh, I love it. Hey, let's have some fun here. This song makes me giggle. <clears throat> Here's the first part of the chorus. He was heading into Boston in a big, long diesel truck. It was his first trip to Boston. He was having lots of luck. He was going the wrong direction down a one-way street in town, and this is what he said when the police chased him down. Give me 40 acres and I'll turn this rig around. It's the easiest way that I've found. Some guys can turn it on a dime or turn it right downtown, but I need 40 acres to turn this rig around. Friends, whether you can turn your life around on a dime or you need 40 acres, God gives you this epiphany, this moment. He reveals His Son to you. Because you need to make a U-turn. You need to go another direction. When you met the Lord, things are going to look different. God's asking you to turn towards Him. And when you do, you're going to have to turn around, turn away from the things of this world sometimes. Will you make a turn? It's pretty inconvenient. Maybe we make these turnarounds throughout our life. 
right? I've had to do that. I've made more than one U-turn in my life, physically and spiritually. <laughs> Point is, God is recalculating the route. He may ask you to do some challenging things. You know, recalculating means counting the cost. Trusting your GPS, your God's purposeful sending. And wanting nothing more than to let God lead you on a new route as you make the turn for home. Because when we come away from an encounter with Jesus, God has new destinations in mind. And we must be willing to let him show us the way. Even if it means turning your rig around right in the middle of life. On this Epiphany Sunday, I hope you can all learn to be more like the wise men. I hope we all can learn this. Perhaps their story can teach us truths even today about seeking and searching for Christ. In our own search for meaning and purpose and peace in this life, can we stop? Can we just stop and recognize the beauty of what God is doing through the Son, Jesus Christ? Will you be willing to rearrange your life and reorient it towards Jesus? Will you allow God to recalculate a new route for us that's guided by the light of Christ revealed in our hearts and witness for all the world to see? May that be your opinion. I say these things in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen, Amen friends. Well, it didn't seem appropriate for our final hymn to be Give me a 40-acre field and I'll turn this rig around. <laughs> Our final hymn is quite appropriate. It is We Three Kings. We're going to sing the, it's page 254. We're going to sing the first and last verses. As always, the altar rail is up. If you have the need to pray uh, silently or you would like the pastor to be with you or you have a need to say yes to Jesus, to recommit your life to Jesus, whatever it is, God's grace is waiting for you. What are you waiting for? Stand and join us.
Uh, no pasty until you put the money in the plate. Put it up there in that gold plate. I'm right here. Right here.